it was finals week. It was crazy, man. Like I had like mad finals, and like I was studying. I have a crib like at, on campus, so all my boys were just there studying. And I was like, "Yo, like, we gotta take a break." So you know, we was chilling. And my break is usually just cooking up. So I was like, I cooked up three beats. I did this one first, and then went to another one, and then went to another blunt drink in like five minutes each. Three days later, I came down to New York. My boy Christian Combs, he had like a studio session. I always cook up with him. We were just cooking up, vibing, and I was taking a break. And Post came out the studio session and like we crossed paths. I was like, I met you in LA. He was like, I fight color. I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, I'm a producer. Can I play some beats? He was like, yeah, let's get weird. I've been fucking hoes and popping pillies, man. I feel just like a rock star. All my brothers got that gas and they always be smoking like a rock star. Me personally, I don't like sitting in beats out. I'd rather be in the studio session with the artist because you never know what vibe you create. I feel like if I sent that beat to post, it probably wouldn't one been touched or it wouldn't have been the same type of energy. Put me in the room. I'm not trying to send no beats. I started like with the 808. Like, that was the first thing I started with. Like I wanted something dark. 80 is like a nice little tempo for that vibe. Like it has a bounce, but you still can make something dark, but have a bounce. That was the 808. And now I'm gonna show you how I add the kick. I try not to have the kick clash with the 808, but also punch through it. I play the 808 and then click through uh, kicks. And then whichever one punches out, then I EQ and compress it. The hi-hats. Now that's what brings all like the swagger into it. I took the hi-hat out where the snare comes in. So it's like a little swag, like doom, doom, snare. And then I brought the whole hi-hat and a way down the octave. And then the last snare, I brought it down also. Lewis is the engineer, a post-engineer, and like close friend. And I had the melodies and like he beefed it up, adding like some piano and like, you know, just making it more full. I thought it was dope to also have background melodies over that. And then we had an outro, and that was like the last thing that was added. Post like added his voice at the end, that was like dope. I always wanted one of my records with that type of vocal bend. This was dope for me, like this record, because I was part of the whole process. So, you know, like I was there at the initial session and I was there on each edit that we did. You know, and I feel like that's also important because then you have a bigger record. I've been fucking hoes and popping pillies, man. I feel just like a rock star. All my brothers got that I went to LA and I didn't know like, like, you know, people, like we was really fully working on this record, you know, and I didn't know that like this song was gonna be like the single, but then Dre London, um, my manager, post manager, and he was like, yo, this might be the single. And I was like, oh, whatever, I don't know. And then I got paperwork. And then that's when I was like, oh, so we going with this then, you know, and then it was out. It really makes you want more, you know? It's all about what you do next. It's funny, I never thought I would feel that way, but it's like, you have to, like, it's all about longevity, it's not about just one and done. Never that. Rockstar.